Okay, so chanson triste means sad song. So we need to communicate that kind of mournfulness in our playing. Um, now some of you may be feeling a little mournful because this might be your first introduction um, to tenor clef. And that right there may make you feel a little stressed out. Now, be reassured that tenor clef is actually really quite easy, all right? So if you're looking at the page and like, oh my goodness, I don't know where the notes are. Well, don't worry, it's not that hard to figure it out. Basically, tenor clef, you take what the note looks like it is on the page and you just move it over a string. And that's what it actually is in tenor clef, all right? So if it looks like it's a G, it's actually a T. If it looks like it's an F, it's actually a C, okay? So you just move everything up a string. Now, that does become a challenge when you are you have a note that's already on the A string, right? Because you can't just move it over one. So you have a couple different options. You could find a place, for example, where that note could be played on the D string, right? Like, so here's my C. I could play this C and then move it over a string. Oh, it's a G, right? Or um, another strategy I could use, I want a C. So I'll think of a lower C, like for example, this C, I move that over a string, it's a G. So I know that that higher one must also be a G, okay? So there's a couple of different strategies you can use for figuring out the higher ones. But in general, a lot of times the trick will work, just move it over a string from what it looks like. All right, so um, Chanson Triste has one very tricky shifting spot. And it's tricky because you shift like for seven notes in a row or something maybe not quite that bad, but you shift repeatedly um, without being able to stay in one position for more than a note or two. And this is in measure 33 is where we're going to start. And for right now, let's do it with no rhythm whatsoever. I'm going to start on the high G. I shift back to second position, up to third position, back to second position. I stay for one note, and I go back up to third. Okay, let's try that again. So I had G, C, F, D, C, F. One more time. Four, one, four, two, one, four. And I gotta think for a second. Da, da, bum, ba. Yeah, so it starts in a down bow. Let's try it with the bowing. Down, up, down, up. A little faster. Same tempo again. Let's try it with vibrato on every note. Ready, and... one of those pieces where you're going to want to just slather on that vibrato nice and thick. All right, pretty much every note you can have vibrato on. Um, so let's go back to the beginning for just a second and talk about the phrase shapes in this piece. Now, you will notice that the first five notes are all the same note, which has potential to become extraordinarily boring. So of course, our job is to make it not boring. And that will probably mean two things. One, Maybe a bit of a crescendo. And along with that crescendo, thing too is maybe your vibrato can intensify a bit. Now, you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to give it all up on these first five notes because you still have a whole piece worth of growth and intensity. If you take a look at this piece, you'll notice it is very clearly structured that the first section is at a quieter dynamic. The middle big chunk is loud and just wailing, sobbing. Then we go back to the exact same thing as the beginning. So we're calming down a little bit. And then at the end, so quiet. It's like we've worn ourselves out with all of this emotional output, all this crying, and now we're just exhausted. Okay. So you got to pace yourself in this piece. Don't go overboard dynamically in the first section or you'll have nothing left to give in the middle section. All right, and when you're in the middle section, you gotta really give it. Um, so anyhow, if we're starting out at the beginning.
this, okay? So you've learned pretty much the whole thing by the time you get there. Now, for this sound quality in the middle, the higher your hand goes, the closer to the bridge your bow needs to go. And what can really give you the intensity here is having a vibrato that's just fast and wide, right? So it just pierces through your heart. Ugh. Um, and now, just practice those notes maybe all by themselves. Now, I admit that physical exertion-wise, I really am kind of working here, and it does sustain for a good few bars. So you got to be careful that you know you're putting the intensity in, but you're not hurting yourself. Okay, so check and make sure is there anything you can loosen while still maintaining this pretty intense sound. Um, and then when a calm spot does come along, make sure you take the opportunity to let your body rest. Okay, and then at the very end, let's skip down to the very last line. Um, so quiet. <laughs> Um, good! So enjoy Chanson Triste, pour your heart out, okay? That's what this piece is all about. And don't be afraid of tenor clef, because it's really not that big a deal. You'll get used to it and you'll be like, oh, this is so easy, someday. Uh, okay! Thanks! <laughs>